Hello and welcome to Deep Blue Sea, the podcast. I am your host, Jake Lewis. Uh, once again, I am without my regular co-host, Mark Hoffmeyer. He is taking a hiatus. Normally on this show, we'd be talking about a chapter of the Deep Blue Sea franchise trilogy, if you will. Uh, uh, one chapter at a time. We finished doing all of that. Head back into our archives to, to listen to all of those. Uh, so now we're moving on to Deep Blue Sea adjacent films that I am less familiar with. That Mark has seen all of these whilst he is away looking after a small child. Uh, so this week we're looking at 47 Meters Down. What is 47 Meters Down? Well, it's a shark film. That's how it's Deep Blue Sea adjacent. It, it stars Claire Holt and Mandy Moore as sisters who are on holiday in Mexico go on a, uh, a fairly seedy-looking shark diving trip, and it goes a little awry when the cage they're in breaks and they end up stuck at the bottom of the sea. Limited air. Sharks. Hilarity ensues. Uh, so as this is a film new to me, I need somebody who uh, has seen it before, who likes the film, is a fan of the film. So returning from... Uh, she was she was a guest um, first season of the show up in Deep Blue Sea when we were in the, the first stage of the kitchen fight from French Toast Sunday is Jess Manzo-Kite. Jess, welcome back to the show. Thanks for having me back. I, I like how you introduced me as a very strong supporter of the movie 47 Meters Down. That's definitely how I want to be known. Well, it, it's more, well, okay. I gave, I presented a list of films to talk about and you're like, I want to talk about the 47 Meters Down films. I was like, okay, great. No one else I did think <laughs> I did think it would be fun to talk about. I will say that. So, well, my first question is, why, why did you pick these? Well, this one. So... I had already seen the first one, and I thought it would just be a fun kind of B-movie level flick to talk about, and I was interested in hearing your reactions to things that happen in it, and I had never seen the sequel, and I thought, well, this will be a good as reason as any, I guess. No, this will be a better reason than any other <laughs> to You'll watch do. the sequel. <laughs> <laughs> and see how that was. So, yeah, I just thought it would be interesting to talk about and definitely in that shark movie vein. So, yeah, well, you're actually you're one of the few people who came back with a list because you, you would have been up for talking about Rogue, uh, the two forty seven years down, the shallows, the Viathan, the descent so we, and sphere, as well as one that I'd forgotten about was being deeply adjacent, which has been added to the mm. list. Uh, so we've already covered the descent, the Viathan and the shallows with other guests. Uh, cool. And so you can head back and listen to those if you want. The Shadows was actually our first post Deep Blue Sea uh, film. That was a fun one. And Leviathan we talked about with Robert Zerbe, and The Descent with Justin Gott recently. Uh, so Rogue, as yet unclaimed. Sphere, unclaimed. <laughs> so we may have you back for those at some point. Who knows? <laughs> uh, but I, I so my, my initial thought, I really liked 47 Meters Down. Uh, it's a very simple premise, and I do enjoy, as with The Shallows, it's you know what you're getting into. The film knows what it is, it and it delivers. It's a kind of a, almost a single location, um, very easy to follow story. Everything, no ridiculous decisions made throughout. It all kind of makes sense one, one beat to the next, and it's just it's good. It's a good shark film. I, I approve. Uh, <laughs> do, you, do you agree with? That? Is it? I am. I'm so glad I didn't steer you wrong. <laughs> You know, we might not have much to argue about, though, because I am in line with everything that you said. I think it, it knows what it is, and it executes what it is, and it is a pretty fun ride, I thought. And the more I thought about it, I was very intrigued by the making of the movie, although, unfortunately, I could not find as many things about the making of the movie. Um, I guess they didn't think this was going to... <laughs> elicit a ton of people running to find making of features but i thought it was pretty fascinating just the concept of how much they shot underwater yeah because it's it's most of the film like once yeah once that cage goes down we stay with that cage we, there's no mm -hmm. there's no cutting back up to the boat there's no checking anywhere else it's just we're here you know the sisters separate at some point we tend to stay with one of them rather than the other but it's it's committed to its concept of we're showing you the most difficult thing to film. We could go up to the surface. We could do this on a soundstage. No, <laughs> it's all underwater. Yeah. Deal with it. I thought, yeah, I thought that was a very effective choice that they made to not go back up to the surface. Yeah, because this is a genuinely scary premise. It's terrifying. I uh, mm. I watched this with my wife. My wife, not a fan of horror films. 
uh, she just it, it was kind of the she had something else to do on her laptop so I can stick on whatever and it'll be fine uh, she she closed the laptop and watched the film which is oh, wow. the greatest compliment I can give to any film because <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is it is so tense uh, there was some the scene where uh, where Mandy Moore has to swim out over that void when she's looking for the, the guy with the torch is just so anxiety inducing oh, yeah <laughs> it's so traumatic uh, so and there's a few few moments that absolutely terrified her. <laughs> uh, is is fun for the person sat next to her. <laughs> yeah, there's some really effective tension where you don't know what's going to happen and enough surprising things happen. It's not there's some good jump scares, but there's also just some very interesting premises they set up that they have to face. That each one it just in a row is so anxiety inducing. Yeah, and there's there's elements where they the seeds of doubt. So so they when they're down under the water, they think they hear the boat leaving. The boat doesn't leave, uh, uh, but we don't know that we're down there with them. So they just add this element of, well, what, what do they do now? The boat's gone. Has the boat gone? Is it? There's this element of of, of uh, uh, they're uncertain. Like, was there a second uh, a winch on the on the boat? I didn't see a second winch up there. I was trying to rack my brains. Was there a second? Like, had I seen one? So I, I'd love that we're completely in their mindset. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, such, it's so well done. Yeah, I, I feel like as the viewer, we're kind of primed to think the worst of the um, the guy running this boat venture, Matthew Modine. Matthew Modine. And, <laughs> and, and you think of these boys as, oh, they're luring these girls in. You know, they shouldn't trust them. And... You're primed to think that based on like other movies and just, you know, general stranger danger, you know, worries. But in the end, it's not quite it, it doesn't really go into that territory, which I appreciated because it just was a little it didn't need that, I guess. Yeah, because Ma Matthew Modine, Cutthroat Islands, Matthew Modine, we talked about recently, uh, of Rennie Harden, fantastic Rennie Harden pirate film with gina davis check it out uh he he's so salty he's so like wind battered i love his look in this film he's just a real like seedy captain and then yeah he's got his ha javier his his crewman is horrible <laughs> he's like uh, spitting and trying to scare lisa and, and kate before they go down there uh happy that he died fun times but they're all they're speaking in spanish up there the, the two the sisters don't speak spanish so anything could be going on God, I don't speak Spanish. <laughs> um, I, it you... does, it does play into some like xenophobic, like potential xenophobic, um, like stereotypes. Yeah. Where you're like, oh, we can't trust what we don't understand. But in reality, like they did what they could in the situation. Now, was that cage and winch maybe not up <laughs> to standards? Maybe. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Sure. Should they have been checking their scuba license? Yes. That would have been better than the operation they were running. But were they ultimately like, you know, complete villains of the movie? Absolutely not. No, I no, I, I say uh, Javier seemed like he would be he seemed like a, a not a nice sort. But then he's the one who goes down to try and, and help them. He's the one they, mm -hmm. they get the spear gone off with. And yeah, Matthew Modine, he hangs out. He's, he does his best to try and say like. By by calling it in and say and calling the coast guard and saying like these two, uh, these two girls are down there, they're trapped. He's probably going to be in some serious trouble for like not checking. Oh out. Like, yeah. <laughs> he's putting his his whole career at risk at this point. His whole livelihood. Uh, and he's willing to do that to, just to try and save these people's lives, which is unusual for these kinds of films. Uh, we we had uh, we had Nick on to talk about Shark Night. <laughs> uh, have you seen Shark Night? Jeff. I have actually. Okay, so there's the two, there's the, the rednecks in that who take the one of the, the 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 women in the group and film her being eaten by sharks. And I got real Shark Night vibes of we're gonna dunk these girls in this rusty cage and we're, <laughs> they're gonna get out a camera and film them being eaten by. Anyway, that's that's the vibe I'm getting. <laughs> so, and I think that's intentional. <laughs> okay, so let's let's. Uh, go through the plot a little for 47 meters down i can say listeners if you haven't seen it if you're a fan of the films we talk about on this show watch 47 meters down we're going to spoil it now uh so yeah we have the, the two sisters they uh it's it's clear early on that lisa mandy moore's character uh she 
had a boyfriend who they, they've broken up uh, because she was too boring. His words. And he she, he, blame, he blames her because he was bored. Sounds like a real nice guy. Uh, yeah. I think he needs to explore that further because I don't think it's her fault. I think that is something related to something inside of him that's lacking. Absolutely. Just my two cents. And so they had this vacation booked. He didn't come, so she bought her sister Kate instead. Uh, Kate's much more outgoing. Uh, take goes out a night in the town where they meet up. They, they meet these two guys, uh, Benjamin and, and Lewis, Louis, know, who uh, convince them to go on the shark diving thing. Fairly straightforward setup. They seem like nice guys. They are nice guys. They have no uh, ulterior mo- motives at hand. They're just we have we know this shark guy. Cause I, I love the they're, they're arguing about like we have I haven't got my license or anything, and they go. This is Mexico. This, there's, there's no rules here. So I was like, <laughs> I was like okay. <laughs> I've never been, but I'm, now I'm not going to go. Uh, so thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and then the next day they get onto the boat. Did you, did you catch the name of the boat? You know, I don't think I did. It's the Sea Esther. Which, oh, boy. Yeah. That's what we're dealing oh with boy. here. I'm, I'm on board. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, so, they go so Jay, let me ask you, how yeah. likely are you as a person who may tra- have traveled to this locale to have made it onto the boat? Like, would you have even gotten onto the boat? Well, I wouldn't have gone out at night in Mexico, so I wouldn't have met these guys. <laughs> but for stage one wouldn't have happened. Uh, but had had I somehow met, had this been a, a an excursion planned by the hotel I was staying at? And this is what the result was. I might have gone on the boat. I don't think I would have gone in the cage. It, it depends on how many other people around me were like, come on, get in the cage. Let's go. <laughs> it, it all depends on peer pressure. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that is a good point. Um, I feel like I, I would have been real sketched out even getting onto the boat. I don't think if it was my sister and I, I don't think we would have be even neither of us is risk taking enough to have gotten onto the boat. But I agree that if there was peer pressure involved, it, who knows? But I don't think I would have gotten in that cage either because I just – I don't have a desire to be that close to sharks. That's not something that I think would be fun for me. Yeah, I've done the super touristy swimming with dolphins, uh, kind of the, the real bougie – Go to Discovery Cove and uh, hey, there's no hold on to the fin, it's going to take you 12 feet in the water. Wasn't that fun? I'm like, well, yeah, it was okay. Uh, but I, I, I like snorkeling around fish, I like looking at things. Well, I, I don't really like looking at things in aquariums anymore, it kind of feels mean. Uh, but mm-hmm. the mm-hmm. rehab center's fine. Uh, but yeah, I don't have a real desire to go swimming with sharks, I'm, I'm good. I've, I've <laughs> seen enough shark movies at this point i understand that these are films this isn't real life sharks don't tend to do mm-hmm. all the things they do in these films even still they the water is where they live the land is where i live let's <laughs> let's agree to have that boundary i'm good uh yeah i don't need to invite trouble like the, <laughs> when <laughs> the scene uh in this where the, once the cage has gone down and kate's trying to fit through the bars and she's still got her her like uh, her oxygen mask on so she can't th- fit through her legs are just dangling out kicking straight out into the water and i'm just like oh a- any second now she's just in she's like presenting for a shark to come and just rip her apart it was uh, so so anxious <laughs> so much of this yeah song. i kept saying every time those legs were swimming in that water i kept saying to rob who if listeners don't know is my husband i kept saying to rob Ooh, that shark saying those legs look delicious. <laughs> om nom nom. Those those legs look delicious. <laughs> it's licking its teeth. <laughs> Jay, I was wondering, what do you think of the motivation of Lisa going against her instinct of not getting into the cage? What do you think about the motivation of oh, it'll it'll really <laughs> make uh, what's his face? Stuart. This is Stuart. Yeah. It'll really uh, show off to Stuart. What do you think about that motivation? I'm not. A, I'm, I'm not a fan. I can. I kind of feel like Kate was clutching at straws. She, she wanted to go. She didn't want to go with. 